Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. How are you? Welcome to the Heart Spark Zen Tangle inspired class. I'm going to be teaching this for the San Rafael Public Library in a couple of days, and I'm just so excited about it. I wanted to share it with you as well. So let's talk about the things that we're going to need for class today. I'm going to be working with a Micron P and Pen. I'll be working with an IdentiPen. This is going to be for pooling our ink in the outside edges. Any thick nib pen will do. If you don't have the IdentiPen, you can use a Sharpie or your favorite puddle pen. I'm also going to be working with a graphite pencil to do my string for class today. So grab just a regular pencil and that will work just fine. You know me, I'm a Prismacolor girl, so grab your Prismacolor pencils. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. If you don't have Prismacolor pencils, just grab whatever color pencils you have and we'll play along just fine. Now you know me, I love to work with the Genesis tile. This is at the Tangled Yogi shop. And if you're interested in really, really smooth paper, this is one of my favorites that we have at the Tangled Yogi shop. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to paper. <laughs> so if you don't have the Tangled Yogi tiles, you can always just draw a square that's four and a half by four and a half inches on your favorite sketchbook. Or if you've got a really nice uh, piece of cardstock that you can use, that's fine too. With that said, let's get started with Heart Spark. So I like to do a little bit of a centering before we get started with our Zen Tangle practice. So go ahead and take a comfortable seated position and just let your materials sit off to the side for a moment. And let yourself get comfortable. Allow your spine to grow nice and tall but not hard here. Letting your shoulders melt away from your ears. Let your hands rest in your lap. And if you're okay with it, allow your eyes to close for a moment. And just taking a moment to settle into your space here and letting your attention come to your breath. So just feeling the breath as it rolls in and feeling the breath as it rolls out. As you inhale, feel your body expanding with breath. And as you exhale, feel your body relaxing and releasing. Inhaling full body breath here. And as you exhale, let it go with a little bit of a sigh. And one more time, inhaling and exhaling. And just for these next few moments as we breathe here, checking in with yourself and asking yourself the all important question, what has drawn me to my Zen Tangle practice today? What have I come to do here? Am I here to take care of myself? Am I here to relax? A little bit of me time? Or maybe you're just here to be creative and have some fun. And that's great too. So just acknowledging your intention for being here and taking in a nice deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. And wiggling through your fingertips and your toes. And then gently blinking the eyes open and adding vision back into your practice. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to go ahead and take this off to the side and we're just going to start with our blank piece here. So one of the things that I love about Zentangle is the idea of breaking up the space so that we can work. And you can see that I've got my graphite pencil in my hand here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to build these areas in which we can create our Zentangles in. And that is a string. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out from this corner right here about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, and I'm just going to make a little dot there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently, and you can see that I'm going very, very lightly here, I'm just creating a little column on this side. And let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger for you so that you can see it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the same thing 
all over again. So I'm just coming out from the corner here about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, and all I'm doing is creating just another column. I'm going to turn my tile again, coming out about an inch and a quarter, creating that column, and one more time right in here, coming out and letting it drop down. And you can see that I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not really worrying too much about making it perfect. We want it to look handmade. So that when we start here, you can see that I have a square in the middle and then I've got all these different spaces in which to work, which is really, really nice. Now I am going to come into the center and do my corner dots like we usually do in the Zentangle practice. And I'm going to once again play connect the dots here by turning my tile and making this work for my hand here. turning it once again. And one more time, closing it off. Now normally I don't uh, use ink right away with my string, but because today's class is so defined, I am going to pick up my pen here. So you're going to see me just start the way that I did before where I just come down and I create a column and you want to take your time with this. I'm going to turn the tile. Coming down again. Turning the tile. Coming down again. You can see this is a little bit of an older pen, but that's just fine. I'm going to keep working with it anyway. So there's the string, right? And then I'll go to the inside just like I did before. And all I'm doing is creating that border on the inside. Turning the tile to make it work for you here. And last one right here. And so now what we have are all these wonderful spaces in which to work. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to start with our first tangle. So before we start with our tangles, I'm going to come in with my graphite pencil here. And the reason why I'm doing this is I just want to divide the space evenly for our first tangle here. So you can see that I'm just making a very soft line with my graphite pencil so that I have two squares right here. And then I'll come down here and I'll do the same thing, dividing it so that I've got two squares right here. And then I'm going to turn my tile again and divide right in the middle so that there's two squares and one more time right here. Now, the reason why I'm doing this with graphite is because I am going to erase this part of the string later on. So the first tangle that we're going to be working with is called Circus, and Circus is by Angie Gettles, and I just love this tangle. I think it's really beautiful. I'm going to do a little square in here. And I want you to think of a Hershey's Kiss. Um, Hershey's Kisses are such a, a beautiful uh, shape, and this particular tangle looks like a Hershey's Kiss to me. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating just a couple of dots on either side here, and this is going to be a landing point. And you're going to see me come down and drop into the side here to make this look like a Hershey's Kiss. Now when we come through and finish it up, we're going to do an aura that will really give definition to this shape. So Circus by Angie Gettles, and one of the things that she does is she puts a little band through it and then a little circle in the middle. 
and then she pulls the ink in and that's her version of circus. We're going to do a little bit of a different version of circus today and it's going to have a tangle from our Valentangle this year in 2024. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by zooming in on this for you so that you can really see what I'm up to here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my pencil and create a couple of dots that are equidistant to each other here. So you can see there they are. And if you want to do this with pencil, you can. You can just come in and just start by creating a little Hershey's Kiss. And then you go to the inside and you create an aura for the inside of it. So I'll come to the next one and do the exact same thing, just dropping over to the side. Nice Hershey's Kiss there. And then once again, creating that aura. And what I love about this is that it does create a little bit of a meta tangle. You can see that there's some leaf-like shapes up at the top as well, which is very cool. So I'm going to go all the way around and do just that. You go ahead and do yours. We're going to leave the corners alone here. So really what I want you to focus on are the two squares on either side, but leave your corners alone. Okay, have fun with that. So once you've got them in the way that you want them, I'm going to pick up my pen and I'm just going to start to ink in just the Hershey's Kiss shape. So I'll come to the inside and do the aura, inside and do the aura as well. Coming over to the other side, attaching to this line, attaching to that line, and then coming around, creating that aura. And so you can see that I'm not doing this line that's right here. I'm going to leave that blank. So I'm going to go around to all of mine and just start to ink those in. And then when we come back, we're going to start to work with a little bit of a Valentangle that happened this year. So we're going to be putting in a tangle inside of a circus here. And I love, love, love this challenge that happens every year. It's called Valentangle. And this year she did this beautiful corner tangle that I thought was really, really beautiful. Uh, but she didn't talk much about it. So I'm actually going to zero in on it today uh, because I think it's so beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into circus here. And you can see that I'm right in here. And all I'm I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the corner and I'm going to make a heart that's right in the corner. Now once I have that I'm going to do the tangle mirth but we're going to do a little bit of a thicker version of mirth today. So what this will look like is I'm going to come out and create this kind of arc that comes out. We'll do another one. And then I'm going to do one more that's going to come in and touch just the side of the heart here. Now to make this nice and strong, we're going to come in and we're going to do an aura that narrows out as it gets to the bottom. We'll do the same thing over here and we'll do the same thing over in here. So it's just narrowing out as it gets to the bottom. Once I have that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull my ink into these pieces here, just like so. And it gives this this really cool graphic feel through the whole thing. So it's just a really, really neat kind of soft tangle, super easy. So let's do it again. We're coming into the lower left hand corner here and you want to think about how large this first one was and try to re reproduce that idea. And then I'll come in again and come right into the center with kind of a curved line. Another one right in here coming back to the center and this one's going to come off to the side and touch. Creating this really nice soft aura that narrows out at the bottom. And then pooling in 
your ink into those pieces. Now, as I go around and do this, I'm going to turn my tile clockwise here so that I always end up in that lower left-hand corner to build the heart, and that will give this kind of a continuous flow, which is really, really nice. So I'm going to go around and do all of mine. I have all of these to do. You go ahead and do yours as well. Remember to let your breath be nice and soft and full. Soften your shoulders. You know what to do here. Just get into the flow. I really love working with hearts. There's something very sentimental for me with working with hearts. I have a family member that has some heart issues and, you know, he's shown a lot of perseverance and, um, you know, just a lot of courage in dealing with it. And um, so whenever I look at a heart, I always think of perseverance and courage. And so it's very near and dear to me. So we're going to start to work with another tangle and this tangle is called Oasis and I love this tangle because it's very very simple and you can do a lot with it. I'm going to show you its you know original form and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. So basically what it is is you can draw a teardrop going up and you can draw a teardrop going down and just kind of moving through. And then at the end of each teardrop, you can see that I'm just kind of making a little loop or making them look like a loop. That's just the way that I do it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start to connect these. So you're going to see it just go ahead and connect over here and then it would, you know, carry on down the line. And then the same thing over here, this is going to connect over here and it would connect on down the line if there were more over here. Same thing over here. So it has this really neat kind of feeling to it and this is by Thomas Pedros. Now what we're going to do with a Oasis is we're going to turn it into a star. And so what it's going to look like is I'm going to just start by making a little circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my north, my south, my east, and my west. Okay. Now once I have that, I'm also going to come and intersect a little bit in here and I won't go out as far. It'll be just a little bit shorter. Now remember the idea of those teardrop shapes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to make these teardrops that go around these loops. And you can see that I'm just using the graphite as my guide. Now once I've got this set the way that I want it, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do another set of loops here. But I'm just going to start by coming in and creating these little arcs that come down and touch. So it's just going to be these little arcs that come down and touch. And you can see that it's starting to create a little bit of a star shape. Now what I can do is I can come in and I can start to go in the opposite direction. So my teardrops are now looping in a different way. which is really kind of neat and creates this beautiful star-like shape. And you can see that that's really, really fun to work with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come into our piece and we're going to start by turning our piece on its side just like so. And I have my graphite pencil in my hand here and all I'm going to do is just very, very lightly intersect this piece on the diagonals. So it almost looks like a kite when you look at it, right? 
Now, once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little circle right in the center. I would say that this is about the size of a pea or a little bit larger. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by creating that nice teardrop shape that's going to come up and touch down. I'm going to turn the tile and I'm going to do it again. So I'm just going to come up, touch the edge, and come down. Turning my tile, come up, touch the edge, and come down. One more time, turning my tile, coming up, touch the edge, and come down. So you can see there's the beginning of it. And now what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to build out just a little bit more for these pieces in here. So I'm going to come out and I'm going to make a line that goes across. And I'll make another line that goes across just like so. And I'm going to do that same thing again. So I'll just turn, come up, touch the edge, and drop down. Turning my tile, coming to the next one, come up, touch the edge, and drop down. Coming over here, come up, touch the edge, come down, and one more right here, coming up, touch the edge, and drop down. So it looks a little something like this, right? So you can see really, really basic here. Now once I have that, I'm going to make these little points on the inside that are going to dip down into the piece. And you'll see that as I'm making these little points, it almost looks like I'm doing it in a circle. It's almost like little stars rotating around the sun, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down from the top here and I'm going to connect to that point and I'll do the same thing over here. Coming down, connect to your point, and coming down and connect to your point. Turning the tile, coming down, connect to the point, coming down, connect to the point. Turning the tile here, coming down and connect, coming down and connect. One more time. One more time. So you can see that we're building that really cool star here, which is neat. And here comes the last one right here. Isn't that so fun? Now if you need to pause me here, this is a good place to do it. Otherwise you're just going to see me come in and I'm going to do the reverse teardrop and come up. Coming in, reverse teardrop and come up. Nice and narrow here. Reverse teardrop come up and one more time. So I'm using those points to come up and out. One more time. And you can see why it kind of looks like a spark right in the center. Isn't that so pretty? I just love that. So once you have yours, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my pen. Remember, you can pause me at any time here. And I'm just going to do this the way that we started. So all I'm doing is I'm coming up and retracing that teardrop and coming back down again. I love to do these really nice kind of pencil over pieces because it reteaches me how I got here in the first place. And you know, sometimes as you're, you know, as you're teaching something, and I know that there's a lot of certified Zentangle teachers that are going to be watching this, you know, 
we have to teach ourselves how to teach you. And so this is a great way to reteach yourself how you did a tangle. Just by doing pencil work first and then ink. There's a lot of repetition in that and I really enjoy that. Turning the tile. So now I'm going to come around and grab this last one right here. Once I've got those in there, I'm going to do the points now. Remember how we came down and did the points? So I'm just dropping down, doing the points here. Turning the tile, making it work for your hand here. Turning. Continuing to turn. Last time right here. And then once again, coming back into the center here, you can see here's my little drop. All I'm going to do is make a little teardrop that comes up and out. So it's almost like it's looping. Turning. One more time. You can see there's that central spark that's just growing right out of it. Super fun. Love the way that that looks. So, so cool. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the outside corners here. So let's wait on the corners and focus on the center, I think. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two colors here. I've got a warm yellow and a cold red. So this is yellowed orange, which is PC1002. And then I also have in my hand Scarlet Lake, which is PC923. And we're going to be focusing in on the center of our piece here and working our way out. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in on this here. And we're going to start by coming in with the yellow first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus in on this petal right in here. And if you have any extra, you know, pencil marks or anything like that that you want to take out of there, feel free to use a little bit of eraser on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very lightly start to dust in a little bit of that yellow all the way around that main teardrop shape here and you can see I've got the little teardrops right next to it. Now once I have that, I'm going to come in right up at the bottom and give this a little bit of that scarlet lake. And I'm going to bring that up around those smaller teardrops. And then you'll see that I'm going to come in and give it a good press right at the bottom. Remember, you have more colors than you think because of how much pressure you're putting on your pencil, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little bit of blending with that yellow pencil right over this line of demarcation in here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see that there's this hard line of demarcation and all I'm doing is little, little circles, dusting it out nice and light and I'm going to dip down just a little bit into that darker red. And you can see that that gives us a really pretty depth. Same thing in here, just a little bit of that soft yellow just to give this a little bit of zing. And then you can see that as I'm moving away from it, I'm lightening up my touch on that pencil to give this a really nice soft blend.
Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way around your star here. And then when we come back, we'll start to add different colors into your teardrop. So I love the electricity that's coming off of that centerpiece. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to ask you to hang on to your orange and your red. Just to have it close by. But we're going to start to work with the other teardrops in here. And we're going to be using a light green and a dark green. I'm going to be working with True Green, which is PC910. It's one of my favorite cool greens. Um, cold in nature I mean and then I also have the grass green in my hand which is PC 909 and these two work really nicely together so that light green is kind of a minty green and then the other one is more of a teal like green so I'm going to start by coming into the teardrops here and I'm just going to go very very softly with that really really light green color. This is the true green that I'm working with and you can see that I'm just going really really lightly with it. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. And I'm also going to bring that into the smaller pieces. So I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. You go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we'll introduce the darker green. So you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around with that light green. Now I'm going to start to bring in some of that darker green. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up into the lower half of this teardrop here and you can see that I'm not pressing very hard with that darker green. It's already got so much pigmentation to it that I don't have to push hard. And so I'm going about halfway up and then I'll come down towards the bottom here and I'm going to give it a little bit of a push. I want that vibrancy down towards the center of that teardrop. Now as I work with the other teardrops I'm going to leave that vibrancy up at the tip, up at the point and just give it a little bit of a push there. So as I go all the way around, the big ones will have the darkness at the bottom and the little ones will have the darkness up at the top. Now if you're like me and you just like to let your brain relax as you're doing this, you could just start by doing all the big ones first so you're doing the same thing every time and then once you've had a chance to go all the way around the piece, you can come back and do the smaller ones in reverse. So that reverse shading, you know, is a little bit different. And so your brain doesn't have to think about going back and forth, back and forth. You just do one at a time. So you can see right now what I'm doing is I'm just going around with each of the big ones and doing the bottom in a heavier color and then I'll come back and I'll do the smaller ones in reverse. Okay, so you decide how you want to go from here and then when we come back we're going to do a little bit of blending. So you could come in and blend in two different ways. One, you could come in with that lighter green and right at the line of demarcation you could start to just dust a little bit of that lighter green in there just to blend it in and then dip down into the darker color and soften it up that way. Or you could pick up your white which is the PC938 and I'm just going to go ahead and just start to make sure that I don't have anything on the point and I can blend in with the white and soften it that way. So this gives it a much more pastel kind of feel if you wanted to do it that way or if you wanted to keep it a little bit more vibrant you could come around and just do the blending with the lighter green instead. So go ahead, decide how you want to do it, and then when we come back we're going to start to work our way outward. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm loving that blend. It's really soft.
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up my yellow and my red again and we're going to start to focus in on the hearts here. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in and I'm going to dust a little bit of that yellow very softly into the heart here and once I have that I'm going to pick up that red and we're going to do a soft dusting of the red down at the bottom here so it'll look a little something like this where I bring in a little bit of that red right at the bottom going very very lightly here not giving this too much of a press and then I'm going to go ahead and give it a press right down at where the point is of the heart and then once I have that I can come in and let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit I can come in with that yellow and right where that red is starting to meet the yellow, I'm just going to buff that out a little bit just by doing small circles. I think that layering color just brings such a richness to the piece. And so now I'm going to let that dive down a little bit into the red, not too, too far. Now I can also pick up a little bit of that white and I can bring a little bit of that white into the top just to give it that pastel feel and I just love the way that that gives that heart so much depth so go ahead and do yours I'm gonna go around and do mine and then when we come back we're gonna to start to focus on this area of circus so I love it when colors are starting to reflect back at each other. I think that it really makes the composition feel really fun and interesting. So we're going to let go of the orange and the red here and we're going to start to work with the blues. I've got a light blue and a dark blue in my hand. I actually have in my hand the aquamarine which is PC905. This is a really nice uh, kind of tealy blue and then I also have in my hand true blue which is PC903. And if you don't have these two that's just fine. What I'm really looking for is a light blue and a dark blue. So just grab what you have and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to be working inside of circus here and I'm going to start with the lighter color first and what this is going to look like is I'm just going to lightly dust that lighter blue around the edge of circus. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that so you can really see it. So I'm just going to start to dust this in. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing with light in this particular part and you'll notice it almost right away. I'm going to come down near the heart as well and I'm also going to do a little bit of blue and you might have already started to see that there's an arc of light that has started to show up in the center of circus and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a little bit of that true blue now and I'm going to go all along the edge of circus and deepen the edges of circus in Now once I've had a chance to do that, I'm also going to come around the heart and give a little bit of a shadow around the heart. And this is going to bring in a little bit of a vibrancy to the piece here. Now once I've had a chance to do that, I'm going to pick up some of that white and I'm going to do some blending. I'm going to come in and I'm going to just go along the line of where that dark blue is meeting the light blue and give that a little bit of a blend and then I'll come in right in here and do the same thing. So I'm really being careful to keep some of that shadow in there and then if you want you can go along the edge of where that light blue is coming into where the lightest part is and you can get a really kind of pastel-y kind of softness and you can see that that's bringing a really nice arc into the piece. If you want to get a little bit more drama out of this you can come back in with a little bit of that darker blue and just bring it in around the edges of circus but being careful not to intersect where that light source is. So you can see that I'm going to come down in here and play just a little bit just to get a little bit more drama out of it and then I might even come in and blend a little bit 
with aquamarine. So you can, you know, kind of play this up the way that you want to see it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that in each one of my circus that I have here. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, then we're going to talk about the corners. For some reason, this tile makes me very happy. The colors, maybe it could be, that are just making me very happy. So I'm going to come into the center here, and I'm going to bring those blues into the center. I'm going to start with the lightest blue first, and I'm just going to do a soft dusting of that light blue, leaving a little bit of a light source over here. Let's zoom in on that so you can really see what I'm talking about here. So I've got that light blue, just a light dusting coming in here. And then I'm going to come in and give it a little bit more of a press. So you can see that the color changes when I put a little bit more pressure on that pencil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with that darker pencil now and I'm going to press right along the edge. I love this particular way of doing the gemstone because there's no um, there's no outline on the circle so it just looks really really interesting to me. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that white and blend these all together. You can see that I'm starting from the lightest point and then working my way back and when I get to where the darkest point is I'm not going too too far back. Now, if you want to add a little bit of pizzazz to this, you could come in with a little bit of yellow right in here just to make it look like it's just got a little bit of labradorite in it. You know, that beautiful stone that has kind of the flash in it. So I'm just going to come in and just give it a little bit of a flash. And that just really gets it to pop and look really interesting. So go ahead and do yours and then when we come back we're going to talk about the corners. So when I originally did this piece I struggled a little bit. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and so I actually ended up with two different versions of this class and I talked to my students and I asked them I said you know what do you like and everybody was very partial to the green one but they said that they really liked this tangle in the corner so I'm going to give you two different options with this particular class so if you want to watch the video for a couple of minutes and make your decision you can go ahead and do that okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by picking up a little bit of my pen and my paper here and I want to talk about the tangle take heart. And Take Heart is by Cheryl Moot. And Take Heart is kind of a, an interesting tangle. So you have a heart shape. And then you have a little bit of a circle in the center here. And then you go ahead and you do these little arcs that come off of the side of this. Now for me, when I do this, it I just see numbers and, and letters. So you could see the number 9 in here. You could see the letter G in there. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to loop around this heart so that it looks a little something like this. Now once you've gotten in there, and let's go ahead and zoom in on it a little bit. Even just like this, it's really, really cool. But if you want to give it a little bit more texture, you can come in and do these really nice auras, just like so. And it just gives this such a unique kind of feeling for a heart tangle, which I really enjoy. So there is Take Heart, which is so, so cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and we're going to start to play a little bit. So do you remember that red that we were working with? I have that scarlet lake in my hand here. And if you wanted to do Take Heart, this is how you're going to do it. So I'm going to start by coming into this corner here and I'm going to do a soft dusting of that scarlet lake in the corner. Now 
what I love about doing wallpaper, and many of you have done wallpaper technique in my classes, is that it doesn't take away from the main tangle. It just kind of is the soft background. But what I'm doing in here is trying to use wallpaper as kind of my main attraction, if you will. And so it's kind of this beautiful quiet moment. So I'm going to come in here and you can see that I just sharpened up my pencil a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and start to put a heart in this corner right here with my Scarlet Lake. And then I'll go ahead and I will come in and do that circle. And remember how we drop down from the side here and then coming over to the other side and then once again coming up and over. So we've got this really nice softness going on in here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start to aura. You can see that this has got a little bit of an edge on it, but that's okay. And then I'll come in and do this side, moving away from that line. And then in here, following this aura. Now to get some really nice shadow going on in here, I'm going to come back in with Scarlet Lake going very, very softly. Starting to develop these really nice shadows in here. And what I love about tangling with the color that you're tangling with, it just is so interesting to me. It just gives it this beautiful softness. It has a soft elegance to it. So you can see that I'm just coming in and very, very lightly starting to create this nice shadow in here. And then I'll come up over on the other side and give this a little softness as well. So that gives this a little bit of texture and interest in the corner without it competing with the rest of the tangle. Now I am going to come in and do a little aura around this and I want to have a nice fine point when I do it. So a nice aura around the corner here. And then I'm going to go ahead and come in and start to create some tipple that's going to go around the edges. Once I have that, I can also come over into this corner and add some tipple and maybe in this corner. And then I'll come in and create this aura that goes all the way around the tipple. And that's how you can do one of the corners for this piece. So if you decided that this is the way that you wanted to go, you could do this in all four corners or when we come back, if you want to, you can learn how to do moon pie, which is the one that I did in the green. Okay, so take a moment, decide which one you like, and then we'll go from there. So let's just say you wanted to go with moon pie, which is that really fun tangle I just showed you. I've got the green in my hand here for moon pie, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to softly come in and start to dust in the corner for moon pie. And since I did it with the green, I'm going to continue to use the green. And this will give this a really kind of nice correlation with the inside of the piece. I always love to come back and try things over again. I think it's interesting. Now because this light green, this is the true green by the way, that I started with in the center of our piece. So because I've started with true green, I'm actually going to switch over to the grass green for moon pie. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in on this here. 
And we're going to start by just putting a little tipple into this corner here. So you can see I've got the darker color in my hand here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put tipple in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of an arc behind. Do another arc. And then I'm going to do another narrow arc. Now once I've had a chance to do that, I can also come in and do some petals in here. So you're going to see me just come up and do these leaf-like shapes all around the outside edge. I'm going to come back in to right where our tipple is very, very lightly. I'm going to come in with that grass green and just do a soft dusting. I can go ahead and I can press a little bit harder to create a shadow. And then I'm going to come up into the second aura. So not this one, but this one right in here. And I'm going to do some tipple in here. And you want to make sure that the tipple are touching. And then you can see that I get these little triangles in here that we call interstices. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull that color into this area in here. Now you can come up into the outside edge where the leaves are and just do a really soft dusting just to create a little bit of shadow where the leaves are. And if you wanted to, you could even pick up a little bit of that true green that we started with and do a soft blurring of the edge. And you could also come into where Tipple is and do just a soft dusting with that light green just to give it a little bit of a shadow on one side to make it interesting. And if you wanted to go a little bit further with it, you could even come in and do a soft shadow leaving a little bit of light source in the center. And so there you have Moon Pie, which is so, so cool, done with a wallpaper technique. Love, love, love this. So we've got these two different ways that we can do these corners here. You choose which ones you want to do. And you know, you could vary it up. You could do, you know, you could do one corner with the, um, with the heart and one corner with Moon Pie. You could, you know, break it up and, and move them around, see, see which one you prefer. Just play. Really, the whole idea is to check these two out and have some fun with it. So now we're going to start to really change things up and make things really different. And that's because we're going to bring in the IdentiPen. So we're going to be pooling a lot of ink in here. Now, if you don't have an IdentiPen or a Sharpie, you could do this part with a dark color. So you could always choose something that's a little bit different. Like in here, if you don't have a dark pen, you could use a dark purple. You could use a darker blue. You could even use graphite. Graphite would be beautiful behind here. So I just want to encourage you that if you don't have the black pen, you don't have to do this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming into the center. And by the way, if you want to take a picture of your piece, it's really going to change a lot in the next few moments. So I'm going to go ahead and just start by adding in a little bit of that really beautiful dark black pen. And what I love about using black 
is that it does give a really beautiful graphic edge to a piece. So you're going to see me just start to work all the way around the center piece. And you can see that I'm being very mindful about where that pen is going and just really taking my time with it. So I'm going to be filling in all the areas around our star in the center. Coming down and over, back and in again. and just working around the piece. You can already start to see how amazing that black is. Isn't that beautiful? Love that. So you can see the difference between this side and this side. Really, really, really vibrant. A little bit quieter over here. Very, very interesting. So the other place that we're going to be putting black, I'll be finishing up this side, but the other place that we're going to put the black is we're going to come in to where we have our circus. And so you can see that I'm just going to go around circus and be very mindful and start to fill in the area around circus. And this is also going to give a lot of gravity to the piece in here. Be mindful take your time with pooling your ink. This is actually a really Zen exercise. So, you know, as you're working, let your mind just be completely engrossed in what it's doing. And, you know, you can take breaks in between, go grab a cup of tea, maybe a little cookie to give you some sustenance. And then when you're ready to finish it up, you can finish it up. Remember to breathe, relax, and enjoy what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to just finish up this one and then I'll go ahead and finish up my other ones as well. And you'll go ahead and do the same, okay? So have some fun, play, and I'll see you in a minute. So you can see that I've had a chance to finish up both of mine and I actually taught the class to San Rafael since I started recording the video and I wanted to show you this one in particular because I interspersed Moon Pie with a little bit of Take Heart and I did it with the reds and then over here of course you know that I did the Moon Pies in a green and I added a little bit of yellow into the corners here just to give it a little bit of a nod back to the center, which was really fun. Now let's talk about adding a little bit of white into this piece here. You can see that I've started to add a little bit of white into this one right in here. I added some dots that went around the in indentations of our star. Now somebody in class yesterday did something really fun and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was so cool. She made snowflakes and I just thought it was such a neat idea so she just did these little bitty almost like little X's with a little bit of uh, intersection with them where she did one, two, three, and then four and it made them look like they were really cute little snowflakes and so if you live in a place where it snows like I do I just thought this was really really cool so you can see that I'm just going around and adding some snowflakes and this is why I really love teaching live because we learn from each other and we get to see how different people do a piece and look at how fun that is and you could even go out into these areas in here somebody yesterday took gold and did dots all the way around which I thought was really pretty but you could also come out with some of your snowflakes and just add I'm gonna do three in here some snowflakes into that outer area Maybe I'll do two in here, which I thought was really cool. 
And just so you can see, another way that you can do it is you can grab some gold. I'm going to pick up some gold right now. Just get that started. And I'll grab the piece that I had over here. And the way that she did it was she did gold dots going around the outside edge, which I thought was really neat and gave it a really cool feeling. So you can see, look at how cool that is, right? So if you wanted to try some gold dots, you could do that. So I want you to play with those and see how you feel about it. And in my original piece, what I did was I just went into the center and added a little bit of those dots in there. When we come back, we'll add some highlights into our hearts. So let's add some white highlights into this piece here. I'm just going to start in the center and give this a little bit of a sheen here just by doing a little bit of a C curve and then a couple of dots. And if you want, you can make one side a little bit thicker just to make it look a little bit more um, shiny. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come into where my heart is here and I'm just going to add a little bit of a white dot in there just to give it a little bit of sheen. So you can see that I'm going around to all the places where I've got my heart and I'm just adding a little white dot just to give it a little bit of pop, which is really fun. The other thing that you can do is you can come out into where you have your wallpaper and you can add a little bit of sheen into where you have your tipple and add a couple of dots. And I think that looks really pretty. It gives it kind of a, a juicy feel. If you wanted to, you could also come in and do a couple of lines inside of where you've shaded in your tipple just to give that a little bit of a pop too. I think that looks really nice. So if you want to give that a try and play with that, go ahead and do that. And then when we come back, we're going to do some final touches. So a couple of final touches for this piece. You can see that I've picked up my graphite pencil. I'm going to add in a little bit of graphite into my corners here. And what I was really trying to do when I did this was really just give this kind of a, a metallic feel so that it kind of popped forward from the rest of it. So you can see that I'm just adding a little bit of graphite into the edges. And then I've picked up my shading tool. This is my blending stump. You could use a Q-tip if you don't have one. And you can see that I'm just blending out that graphite in the corners just to give this a little bit of interest. Getting right in here. And right over here as well. And if you wanted to go up into Circus and add some blending into Circus, that's really pretty too. In fact, I'll show you a little bit of blending inside of Circus. You can see that I did a little bit at the bottom and a little bit up around the top, and that just gave that a really nice pop as well. So if you want to play with a little bit of graphite, you can. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is, you know, in my original piece, I did add add these extra lines in the center. And if you want to try that out, you're more than welcome to. And I'll just show you how I did it. So all I did was I just kind of rounded off. And then I dropped down and created this line that went right back to the center. So you can see that I'm just dropping down and coming back to center. And then I pull my ink in those areas. So I'm rounding off and dropping down into center. One more here and one more there. And let's really get this nice and close for you to see. And then I pull my ink around the edges. So same thing over here, just jumping off coming back in, jumping off, coming back in, and one more right there. 
So these are just different ways to finish the star. You know, if you want to leave it kind of open the way that we had it before, you're more than welcome to leave it open. I actually really liked them open, but I know that a lot of people like the fine details. And so this is just another way of doing that kind of fine detail work later on as you move through a piece here. There's so many different ways to approach Zentangle. And so I want to encourage you to really use your own artistic voice and try something different. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and add this little last detail, you can go ahead and do that now. This is a great time. Have fun with it. I love that the same tangle can look so different just by adding a little bit of detail work to it. I love how clean and open this one looks, and I love how vibrant and exciting this one looks. So they both have their own feel to them, and I really enjoy that. So I want to talk about putting in your chop. And, you know, for this particular piece, it's a little bit difficult to find a place to put your chop, but I'm actually going to put my chop in the wallpaper here. And I've got my green in my hand and I'm just going to put my chop right down here in this little corner and just quietly acknowledge that I've finished the piece and you know you can do it however you like but your chop is really important because it kind of signifies that you've completed a moment of self-care and a moment of creativity so I really enjoy doing that and I hope that you do too if you enjoyed the today's class, go ahead and give it a, a thumbs up or a really nice review. Even better, hit the subscribe button. You'll help me grow my Zentangle following and you'll be notified anytime I add a class to the channel. So that's it for me this time. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi. Thanks so much for joining me. Until we tangle together.